What does it mean to think rationally? A Google search reveals the definition of the word rational is based on or in accordance with reason or logic. And so it follows that to think rationally, one must make logical and reasoned deductions. Stated in another way, thinking rationally requires the absence of emotional bias. Humans are emotional creatures, and for good reason. Our emotions have helped our species survive as long as we have. But there are many facets of life in which emotions can lead us down the wrong path. It happens that the stock market is one such place where emotion is best left out of the equation. You've probably heard of the saying, buy low and sell high. When it comes to investing, and at first glance it seems like an obvious piece of advice, but time and time again, novice investors do the exact opposite. Observe the most recent financial disaster. In July of 2007, the S&P 500 reached an all-time high. In the months leading up to this, the market had been continuously climbing higher and higher. It just so happens that in the months leading up to this all-time high, retail investors, that is mom and pop investors just like you and me, began piling into the stock market in droves, having missed the last few years of amazing gains. The retail investors finally decided they would get in on the market. But fate would have it, in the months leading up to the S&P 500's all-time high, the market began to crash. The United States faced one of the worst recessions since the 1920s. And the retail investors who had just decided to get in on the market were the worst ones hit. Institutional investors had known that the housing crisis was brewing and that the market gains were unsustainable. In the months leading up to the S&P's all-time high, institutional investors began pulling funds from the market just as retail investors began investing. So what happened? Well, essentially, institutional investors who had been in the market for quite some time already were selling their investments to collect their gains. That is, they had bought low and sold high just as a rational thought process would dictate. Retail investors, on the other hand, had done the exact opposite. They got into the market near the highs and then had sold after it crashed near the lows. They invested in the market near its highs because they had feelings of hopefulness and exuberance. Investing based on feelings turned out to be a huge mistake. Then once the stocks had continually hit lower lows, they pulled out their money, scared that they might lose everything that they had invested. This was again a huge mistake as it was one of the best buying opportunities in recent history. There's a quote by Warren Buffett, perhaps the most successful investor of all time, that I want you to all memorize. Be fearful when others are greedy and greedy when others are fearful. What Warren is really telling us is to go against the herd mentality. If you can recognize when stocks are significantly overvalued, it is a sign that others are greedy. Have your exit plan ready. If you can recognize when stocks are significantly undervalued, it's a sign that others are fearful. You should begin buying hand over fist. In late 2008 into early 2009, stocks had become incredibly discounted. There has never perhaps been a better time to invest to find bargains in recent memory. The key was simply to recognize what the bargains were. In 2008 and 2009, there were bargains in all sectors. The financial sectors were particularly low priced. There were fear mongers shouting that the banks would go bankrupt and that the end of economic prosperity was over as we knew it. This simply wasn't true. At the time, the United States government could not afford to let the banks go under. And they showed that they would stand behind the banks no matter what. They literally gave the banks hundreds of billions of dollars in bailouts. To me, this was an obvious signal to buy bank stocks. And so I began to research them heavily in an attempt to find the ones that were the most undervalued. I purchased Bank of America stock and never once regretted it. Always keep in mind that a stock market crash is an opportunity for you to buy stocks at prices you won't see for years, perhaps even decades. 
be sure you are positioned to capitalize on the opportunity when it knocks on your door. Investors have searched for patterns in the market for as long as they've existed. And a few years ago, I've stumbled across a chart and found a negative correlation between the performance of markets and the sentiment of news headlines. It showed that as the headlines became more positive, the chance of a market crash in following months significantly increased. And as headlines became more negative, the chances of a market doing well in the following months significantly increased. For example, it was more likely to see headlines of magazines and newspapers encouraging people to spend money on luxuries or to invest in the markets when they were near their peak. Conversely, headlines were more likely to warn of dangers of investing after a stock market crash. Historically, headlines have told us when to buy when we should be selling and to sell when we should be buying. This turns out to be the most consistent indicator I have ever seen. And what it really provided me with was an insight into market behavior and psychology. It was like seeing the famous words of Warren Buffett's, be fearful when others are greedy and greedy when others are fearful, expressed in a graphical representation of data.